Welcome back. Fall break is quickly approaching and KMBU TV reporter Jessica Mulvaney went to find out what students have planned. Baker University's fall break is from October 11th to the 14th. Now that the countdown has begun, plans for break vary from student to student. My plans are to go home and hang out with my family and um, see my little sister play volleyball, hopefully. Um, I'm thinking about lifting weights, doing a little bit of extra studying, and possibly football. Uh, I'm going to play frisbee golf for like four straight days in probably Lawrence, Olathe, and Kansas City. Fall break, I'm just going to drive down to my aunt's house and spend time with my cousins and some family. Yes, I plan on catching up on lots and lots of sleep. I'm going back to Oklahoma to see the love of my life. I'm going home to New York. <laughs> to visit. Sleep, sports, and family time seem to be the plans for this year's fall break. I'm Jessica Mulvaney, KNBU TV. Thank you, Jessica. And now KNBU TV reporter Jessica Mulligan has tips on how to throw a dinner party with Baker's catering coordinator, Tanya Sieber. Thanks, Trisha. We're now going to speak with campus caterer Tanya Sieber on how to throw a dinner party and be a good host on a college budget. Well, first of all, um, you are college students. You don't have money to spend on a fancy dinner party, but anyone can put together a nice, filling, attractive, impressive meal on the cheap. So I'm going to give you one possible menu um, that would feed four people for under $15, even if you buy an already prepared frozen dessert. Um, if you buy a whole chicken in the um, meat section of the grocery store, instead of buying expensive um, skinless, boneless chicken breasts, you'll have a lot more meat. It's a lot more delicious than those boneless, skinless, bland, boring chicken breasts. And you can't mess it up. Very easy to prepare. Um, you will normally spend three to five dollars on a whole chicken, and that whole chicken will easily feed um, four people and usually leave you with leftovers. All you're going to do is take that chicken, rinse out the cavity, and throw it in a baking dish rub some olive oil on the skin and season it with salt and pepper. I like to use a little poultry seasoning as well. Um, and throw it in a 350 degree oven and don't touch it for 45 minutes to an hour and a half depending on the size of your chicken. You will know when it's done because the legs will be pulling apart from um, the body of the chicken easily, but to be sure you can use a meat thermometer to test the internal temperature of the chicken, which needs to be 165 degrees for safety. Um, the skin should crisp and brown and be um, delicious, so don't throw that away. Don't cut it off. The skin is the best part. And while your chicken's in the oven, you'll take a small bag of baby red potatoes, very cheap, probably two or three dollars worth of potatoes, wash them, quarter them, toss them in that same olive oil that you used on your chicken, some salt and pepper, maybe a little Italian seasoning. You could use the same poultry seasoning, in fact, that you used on your chicken. Throw your um, potatoes on a sheet pan, put those in the same oven that your chicken's in, and let those roast for 30 to 40 minutes until they're golden brown and they'll be perfect. And um, to finish your plate, a nice fresh vegetable that's easy to prepare in advance. I highly recommend asparagus. Um, it goes nicely with any menu. All you're going to do is take your asparagus, cut off the lower half of the stalks, boil the asparagus in um, salted water for about a minute, no more than two minutes. Take the asparagus out of the water and if you're going to serve it immediately, Toss it with a little salt and a little butter and it's done. Or if you're going to prepare it ahead and heat it up at time of service, you'll take that asparagus and shock it in ice water to stop the cooking. And then when you're ready to serve the next day or later that same day, um, you just gently reheat it on the stove in a pan with a little bit of butter and of course a little bit of salt. 
buy a frozen dessert, buy frozen rolls, make it easy on yourself. Um, no one says that you have to be um, a talented pastry chef to put together a nice dessert. One way you can cheat is to buy a pre-made frozen plain cheesecake and dress it up with some Hershey's chocolate syrup and some Hershey's caramel sauce and a little tiny bag of chopped pecans and voila you have turtle cheesecake. You can get really fancy and garnish it with a couple of fresh raspberries on the plate and it looks like you've slaved over a gourmet dessert when in fact you pulled it out of your freezer and let it thaw on the counter for an hour beforehand. Very easy to do. Um, you as the host are responsible for your guests having a good time um, in your home. Always offer refreshment when your guests arrive. Always make introductions. Make sure that all of your guests know one another and help start up conversations between them. Um, you as the host should be participating in your party, not behind the scenes in the kitchen slaving away. So make sure that you leave yourself plenty of time to prepare whatever it is you're serving in advance. Plan your menu such that most of the prep can be done well ahead, even days ahead, so that when your guests arrive, you're not slaving in the kitchen. You're doing last minute finishing touches for the meal, but most of your time you'll have free to spend with them. For additional tips on how to throw a great dinner party, visit thebakerorange.com. I'm Jessica Mulliken for KMBU TV. Thanks, Jessica. That wraps up this week's episode of Inside Baker. Once again, I'm your host, Trisha Shelton. Join us again next time.